Hey, welcome. Today we're getting into monochrome. Talking a little bit of black and white. This episode is brought to you by Cardi Crew Merch and the amazing members that support this channel. More on that later. So here's my question for you. Is your favorite image ever that you've taken, is that image in color or is that image in black and white? That's my first question for you. Next, your favorite image of another photographer, your favorite image of all time, is that image a color picture or a black and white one? Photography was invented in 1835 by William Henry Fox Talbot in the US and by Daguerre in France at the same time using completely different processes. The only similarity, it was a monochrome process. Now, William Henry Fox Talbot, his first image was literally this view from a wind and this image it, it's it's the first it's called latticed window august 1835 the first negative ever made now daguerre daguerre also was creating photography in france and his first photograph this is actually the first photograph of a human being because there is a human right here in this photograph this is the first daguerreotype so photography photography has been a monochrome process since the very very beginning but what's rarely known is that joseph nisiphor nipse who was Daguerre's assistant, actually made the first photograph. Let's go, Teresa. Welcome. Thank you for becoming a member. Teresa is the newest and grooviest member. Appreciate you, Teresa. Welcome. Glad you're here. Um, rarely known that Joseph Nisiphor Nipse was the very first photograph in 1826. Literally nine years before photography was supposedly invented. And this is actually the first ever photograph taken, 1826. Now, color photography was invented in early 20th century um, with the first co practical color photographic process known as autochrome. That was invented in 1907 by the Lumiere brothers. But this photograph and color photography in general took decades, decades in order for color photography to be adopted on a global level. And also color photography to be widely accessible and popular. Black and white photography remained the primary medium for capturing photographs really up until like for a significant part of the 20th century. Black and white has just been how our world has been documented, mostly, mostly in black and white. The transition from predominantly black and white to color photography varied depending on like what made it happen was technological advancements, the affordability of color film, processing and just the industry's artistic preferences around the 1950s 1960s color photography really started to surpass black and white photography as the preferred choice for many photographers since then 
color photography has become the dominant form of photography in both amateur and professional realms. Ooh, oh my God, I think I got to sneeze. <sighs> this podcast is brought to you by Cardi Crew Merch. Every piece you see, designed by the photographer you're currently watching. And let me let you in on a little secret meticulously hand-stitched by the arthritic grandmothers of our very own viewers. Well, uh, what? This creative community inspired this entire line. Your zeal okay, for artistry, your tireless dedication, and your individuality shines in every stitch and design. This isn't just another piece of clothing. It's a badge of honor for every creator out there. From what I see here, they are mostly just black t-shirts and hoodies. But you do you boo. You actually want me to read the rest of the script? Oh my god, who is this guy? From the nuanced patterns to the vibrant colors, everything has been designed keeping in mind the creative soul that lies within each one of us. Wow, who wrote that? There isn't a single pattern, not one. Oh my god, leave the There's commentary. There's hardly any nuance. But it says oh here, god, this merch this represents more than just apparel. It's an emblem of our shared passion for creativity. Who wrote this? What absolute twaddle. Wow, this guy's a great supporter. All of this stuff is kind of basic, to be honest, but I'll keep that to myself. Okay, <sighs> never Wear trust pride. a voiceover. Let the world know you're a part of something bigger. A photographer on YouTube's clothing collection that he actually has the balls to make a commercial about. Okay, what Sorry, is going what on? what I meant to say is, a collective of photographers that celebrates and uplifts every form of creativity. I am aware. As the narrator, I'm not allowed to insert my own narrative. But, holy moly, this is horrible. Wow. Join the movement, embrace your creative spirit with Cardi Crew merch. And yes, he is really calling this a movement. Be proud of your passion for photography. Be proud of your creative life. If photography is your life, flaunt it. The one paying for this advertisement has asked me to make a toast. Isn't this a podcast? Okay, it'll cost you another 20. Let's raise a toast to every photographer, artist, and creative out there. Thanks for being a part of this journey. This guy's so Did that suit you? That was absolutely ridiculous. Please don't make me read anything like that again. Back to the show. Black and white photography continues to hold a special appeal for many photographers. And there's a few reasons why black and white really is often considered like almost more visually captivating almost more engaging than traditional color photography black and white has a timelessness and an emotion it, it they have a timeless and classic quality that can evoke a sense of nostalgia, a sense of depth, and an emotional impact. The absence of color allows us as the viewer to focus solely on the composition, the lighting, and the subject matter, which can convey a more profound and powerful image. Notice the simplification and the focus. When you remove color from the equation, it simplifies the image and it allows you to focus on the essential elements of the photograph by eliminating the distractions caused by vibrant hues black and white photography can emphasize the lines the shapes the textures and the patterns resulting in a more graphic and sometimes more striking image black and white also enhances contrast and mood. Without the distraction of color, black and white photography excels in emphasizing contrast. This can create dramatic and moody effects, enhancing the overall atmosphere and the storytelling within the photograph. The shadows and the highlights become more pronounced and it adds depth and dimension to your photograph. Black and white also highlights form and texture. By stripping away color, black and white emphasizes the shape, the textures, the form of the subject that you're shooting. It allows for a heightened appreciation of the details and the subtle nuances that might have been overlooked in a color photograph. 
and it encourages the viewers to see the world in a different way, focusing on the underlying structure and the texture within the frame. And of course, black and white photography gives you a unique artistic expression and interpretation of the world. The world is in color, so when we see it in black and white, it allows photographers to play with tones, with contrast, and various grayscale values to create visually and strikingly thought-provoking image. The, th the absence of color encourages photographers to rely on composition, on light, shadow, to convey their creative vision. It's important to realize that the appeal of black and white photography versus color is subjective and can vary depending on personal preferences, the subject matter, and what your intended message is. But both color and black and white photography have their own strengths and weaknesses and are both valuable tools for visual storytelling and artistic expression. We are looking at the work of Pierre Liato, an amazing, amazing black and white photographer. All right. So let's get into a little bit of this week's inspiration, where we're going to look at black and white emotion from three different genres of photographer three different genres and i have a photographer who is in my mentorship program and this photographer loves shooting dance so i thought how amazing would it be to start with black and white emotion and and talk about how it applies to com contemporary dance photography how it shows fluidity how it shows composition and how it shows light how it shows power we're looking at contemporary dance photography all right let's get into it look at the line look at the power the feeling of seeing just the subject the muscle tone the light the subject look at how black and white can be a weapon when in the hands of a skilled photographer so many photographers really have forgotten about the power of black and white and if you're trying to make your color photography better practicing in black and white setting your camera on monochrome of course you're shooting raw but setting your camera on monochrome and making your captures in black and white can actually help you make stronger compositions as we look at this incredible contemporary dance photography i want you to think about decisive moment I want you to think about movement and I want you to think about how you can use black and white and movement in order to enhance your own photography. Look at this image, like look at the power of these photographs. This is photography. This is not taking pictures. This this is making pictures. This is taking our photography to a level of art, to a level of, I want to print this. I want to see this on a wall. And you notice that the power of movement and the power of decisive moment when added to photographing people now it doesn't matter 
who the person is. It doesn't matter if the face is shown per se. It is all about the movement. It is all about the light and it is all about the emotion, the feeling and that decisive moment. Black and white photography can be so incredibly powerful. And the reason that I chose this to talk about today is just to show you how by removing one element of your photography, by disciplining yourself to compose and shoot in black and white, even if you choose to make your images color later, shooting in black and white, composing in black and white can really help you take your compositions, take your distractions, remove like, oh my God, look how easy it is to remove your distractions when you're looking at black and white photography. You're truly making pictures, not taking pictures. This was the original photography long before color there was black and white. And today's episode is to inspire you to leap back into black and white and use it as a stepping stone to help you get to the next level. Did that dance photography inspire you? Yeah, did that dance photography inspire you? It's pretty wild, right? Like again, these episodes, my only goal is to help you like just click your brain just a bit, just like a little bit of a, a jig. Like us photographers, we get stuck. We get stuck. And believe me, I've been doing this for three decades professionally. I've been shooting photographs for four decades since I was 14. So we get stuck. There's times it goes up and down. This isn't a sprint it's a marathon so during those times where we feel stuck there's things that we can do there's things that we can do we can reset we can reset we can go back to the core of our photography we can go back to the core of photography in general and that core was black and white so that first photographer, that I mean, that first slideshow showing you contemporary dance photography, showing you motion, fluidity, composition, light, power. That was pretty strong, but there's more. I'm going to show you the work of photographer Lee Jeffries. And I got to say, <laughs> Lee Jeffries will break your brain. This photographer will break your brain. And the thing that's good is it's necessary. It's necessary to break your brain a little bit when it comes to photography. It's necessary to look at photographers that make you want to quit. And photographer Lee Jeffries, he is an absolute mind bending portrait photographer that gives a voice to the voiceless that shoots the forgotten that shoots homeless people who are missed walked by ignored he's the one that stops hangs out has a cigarette with them gives them money and makes these absolutely incredible captures We are looking at the work of the incredible Lee Jeffries. When it comes to your own personal street photography, when it comes to you going out and making photographs of people who might be less privileged than you, people who might not have housing. When it comes to making those types of photos, there is a way for you to do that and 
photograph these people in a dignified way. There is a way to photograph these people in an artful way. There is a way for you to sit and listen to their stories. If you guys are enjoying this episode, please consider hitting the like button. If you're as obsessed about photography as we are, please consider subscribing. Look at the mood that black and white portraiture can take you through. Look at the feeling that you can get from black and white when you isolate when you remove all distractions and focus just on one thing. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Incredible. There's a rawness. There is a mood. There's an emotion and like a delicacy to this photographer's work. There's also a harshness. An undertone of sadness and sorrow to this work. Absolutely, absolutely mind-bending. The work of Lee Jeffries. Yes or yes. Do let me know if you guys are still with me. If you guys are with me, say, hey, yeah, let's go. All right. So these episodes are to motivate. These episodes are to rev you up, to get you going, to get you feeling like, when is this episode over yes so I can yes. go out and make some photographs? That's what it's all about. So earlier on, I was showing you the work of Pedro Lieto and Pedro and his incredible landscape photographs. Yes, Let's look yes. at a little bit more from Pedro Lieto. Unbelievable work. If you're a landscape photographer, if you're a solo artist, if you prefer being just in the world, trying to find your compositions, preferably out of the city, have you shot black and white? Have you shot black and white often? Is, do you compose in black and white? The question to ask yourself is, can you see in black and white? When you see a scene, can you imagine in your head what that scene would look like in monochrome? What's your preference? I asked you earlier, is your favorite photograph that you've ever seen in the world. The favorite photograph out there made by any photographer. Is that photograph color? Or is that photograph black and white? Ask yourself that. And I also asked earlier, your favorite photograph, the, fa the photograph that you made. Is that a color photograph, your favorite one? Or is it a black and white one? My first most important session is my photographs of Tom York from Radiohead that I photographed in 1997 on my Hasselblad camera one week before OK Computer. I'm going to start sharing with you some of my favorite black and white images. Images that I feel like from my own work, just <laughs> some of my best stuff. <laughs> Some of my stuff from my archives. And I'm also going to share with you some of just my favorite black and white images 
from the world, you know, that I think have really played a pivotal role in my photography journey. So um, we're going to start, I'm going to start back here and I'm going to show you my Tom York from Radiohead session, as I just mentioned. 1997, I was hired by the Globe and Mail newspaper to photograph Tom York from Radiohead. I thought that I was going to shoot the whole band, but I ended up shooting just Tom York. And um, at that time, in 1997, I had the only photograph of him smiling. And back in 1997, when I was shooting for the Globe and Mail, the Globe and Mail was a black and white newspaper. So I shot Tri-X and Plus X. That was what I shot. And I made this photograph. I made these photographs. This is the first one. And this is the second. I've been talking a little bit about stories from my past sessions. This picture is one of the most important photographs of my career. I've been talking about um, some stories from my most important sessions. So there is an episode called, um, like, I bet you didn't know that I photographed Tom York, which you can definitely watch. And there is another one that I did recently that has Pharrell on the cover, um, on the thumbnail that I talk about my most important sessions. So the Hasselblad right here. This baby has Tri-X black and white film loaded in it right now in here in this dark slide. But the sound that this Hasselblad makes, the sound that this Hasselblad makes, let's do a little ASMR. I love the sound of this Hasselblad. And by the way, these curtains here, that's not the shutter. That just opens, lets the light touch the shutter, touch the film back here. Um, but that's not the shutter. Um, the shutter is actually in the lens. And if you see here, I'm going to set the shutter and the aperture are both in the lens. So I'm going to set this for a one second exposure. By the way, there's no batteries in this camera. It runs just on springs. This is a one second exposure. You see that? And then when you wind it, the shutter actually opens again. And it's also a leaf shutter, Hasselblads. So the shutters don't open like this, the shutter opens like this in a circle. So it doesn't matter what sync speed you're using with your flash, Hasselblads and leaf shutter cameras sync at any speed. So I can sync my flash at a 500th of a second because my shutter opens like that. I'll show you again. That's the shutter opening. And then when I set it at a 500th of a second, or let's do it at a 60th. And also you see here on the lens, there's the shutter speeds at the top and the apertures below. Look, this is a 60th of a second. You can barely see just the light above. I'm gonna do one more, barely. Anyways, that's the Hasselblad. And this was the camera that I shot for the Globe and Mail. And it was black and white. And it was shooting, processing, making prints, and doing this multiple times per week. During that time, I'll tell you for sure I learned exposure. I for sure learned how to expose black and white. And I for sure learned how to shoot for print. I learned how to shoot for newsprint, which was at that time like 25 DPI, like it felt like it was like 180 DPI, 76 DPI. So learning how to shoot for print and shooting black and white and having black and white be the thing that was my main job. I also found myself shooting 
childhood star Corey Haim on my Hasselblad. And you can see when you shoot full frame Hasselblad, there are notches right here. And those two notches, for those that are very much in the know, those are Vs, as in Victor, as in Victor Hasselblad. So the maker of Hasselblad, because his square format cameras were so often copied, he made sure that he had a way for you to identify that his shots were, like pictures were taken on a Hasselblad. Hence the Hasselblad notches, which you see in this right here. Hasselblad notches. Those notches are actually in the camera back. Every Hasselblad back has notches and they might be visible, but they are on. <laughs> Let's see if they're visible. <laughs> yeah, I yes might have yes. to pull the dark slide, but they're visible basically on this side. They are right, I think, on. Yeah, they're here. They're on this side. A couple of notches. So it's on the film back, basically. It tells you that it's a Hasselblad. All right, enough about my Hasselblad. Back to, by the way, it's my most prized possession. So that's why right now it's rotating on a podium over there. All right. Yes, I did photograph actor Corey Haim roughly um, two years before he committed suicide. And he was incredibly troubled at the time that I photographed him. Incredibly troubled. All right, let's get into some more incredible black and white. Let's talk about how throughout my career, black and white has been something that I've always danced in and out of shooting black and white because with my work and the way that I shoot skin, there's just always been a desire for me to see in black and white because that's my roots and also how black and white photography and my own black and white photography is actually crossed over into advertising this i shot for hp just before um apple bought hp i mean bought um beats by dre um beats by dre were doing collaborations with uh, hp so i did an ad for beats headphones and beats computers or like hp slash beats they did a collaboration cd covers this is short sh um or like a slow shutter speed drag with flash cd covers and the power of black and white fashion editorial and how shooting skin and and my homage to her brits Matthew Rolston, Helmut Newton, Richard Avedon, and, and the way that I always try to honor the masters when it comes to my commercial work and using, using black and white in my commercial work. I think I have the double page magazine editorial that this um, double fist thing was in. So I'll make sure that I put that one next. Yes. Put that right there. There we go. And then you can see. Come now. You can see the double page spread and then see it in the magazine and how minimal the tear sheets they were like just a little bit of design this is my thumbnail this is not kaiser sozeg but this is indeed gabrielle byrne actor gabrielle byrne who's been in over 50 movies he's in uh, the usual suspects Somewhere in and around, like, after my Tom York photograph and for the next, <laughs> the rest of my career, 
I started really becoming an established portrait photographer where shooting celebrities was something that I was doing almost weekly. And as dry as Gabrielle Byrne looks in this photo is how he was during this session. He was so matter of fact, he was so, okay, what would you like me to do? Stand here, okay. How would you like me to look? I'm like, just look at the camera, okay. And he just really gave me like that actor that you know. He just gave me the that character that you that you recognize. And I want you to also notice that I, I shot this photograph like literally 19 years ago. Like I shot it in 2005, 2015. Yeah, like I shot it like 18 years ago, roughly. And my style, my composition style, the way that I shoot across two pages, how I compose my horizontals, how I shoot portraits, my, my style fundamentally hasn't changed. And it's something that I want you to know when you think about classic and timeless and how often you hear me say that classic and timeless classic and timeless last forever which is why i can show you a photograph from 20 years ago and be okay with you looking at it because my style primarily hasn't changed the way that i compose the way that i light the way that my skin looks the way that i shoot across two pages editorially there's definitely a definitive style. There's a definitive way that I've made my photographs. This is Hyde from that 70s show. Danny Masterson. Photographed Danny Masterson in, I think, 2005. Here's another fun fact. I shot this camera. I shot this photograph on my first digital camera and my first digital camera was a canon rebel a canon rebel six megapixels so i want you to look at this and realize that this photograph is six megapixels six so it's not about the gear necessarily it, what it is is a 50 millimeter lens, a 50 millimeter lens. This photograph of Gabrielle Byrne, I shot this picture likely on a Rebel. If not, it was the 10D. And again, we're talking six megapixels, eight megapixels. It's not about megapixels. It's about idea and execution. It's about making pictures, not taking pictures. All right, let's get into some more. I have a few more bangers in here that I wanna share with you. I wanna share with you how I shot, I shot film and I applied film photography to shooting rappers to shooting cannabis culture again i want you to notice the hasselblad notches once you see these notches you will never be able to see the v's you'll never be able to unsee those hasselblad v's This is part of my multiplicity series where I use a flash system that I can fire strobophot, like ba 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 ba, stroboscopically. I can do strobe on my flash and I can change the duration, I can change the interval. And this particular picture, you can see I fired the flash seven times as this guy walked through my picture. This is a girl with her bike as part of my life cycle series that I photographed in London on Brick Lane in front of Brick Lane Coffee on the historic Brick Lane. The power of black and white. 
This picture was such a different photograph in color, but in black and white, you see just what I want you to see. And I want you to see also just how some of my images are used commercially. And when you see this photo here, and you see this is the American poster that they used on BET Plus. By the way, I shot all the artwork for the Porter. This is showing in the US on BET Plus and in Canada on CBC Gem. The Porter used my images in black and white for the American artwork, and they used my images in color for the Canadian artwork. And you can see how different these two posters feel just based on my work being used in color versus black and white. Super cool just to see that difference. Same artwork, different use. Same show, different use. So, ah. Uh, I want to now show you some of the black and white images that just we're going to start we're going to start with um this is kind of I'm going to do first an homage to one of my viewers and this viewer is my first viewer literally when I had nobody watching me this person was watching me and the person I'm speaking about is Julie Lagovska Julie right now lives in the Ukraine, but she did live in Toronto. That's where I met her. Julie is my retoucher. She does my post-production. And I also just want to show the evolution of her portrait photography. Just, and I'm gonna show three photographs in order to do that. I'm gonna show her first submission the very first time she submitted a photograph to my show. And then I wanna show you a photograph that she made three years later in studio under studio lights. So, Julie Lagowska, this is her first submission. And this submission she shot I did, I started my show in February, 2021. I think that she shot this picture roughly the end of 2020 during COVID. And you can see the issues with focus. You can see the issues with eyeline. You can see the digital noise. You can see there's an idea there. There's a photographer in there, but there's some direction that is lost. I want you to look at a photograph that she took in studio. This is when she was shooting with her Rebel, I guess. And then she bought my 12 year old Canon 6D. And this is what she started to do with a 6D and a 50 millimeter. And I want you to see the nuance. I want you to see the light and head angles exposure seeing her shoot natural light and by the way julie shoots pretty much almost all the thumbnails and for a good while all the thumbnails on of me that you saw on my channel were shot by julia i want to just do a fast a fast run through of um her website because her stuff is just, she's, she's come so far. And looking at her photographs in, this is a photographer who has been trained by me only. No photography school, just my influence, just watching my shows, just participating in my lighting workshops, how far her work has progressed in the two and a half years that she's been watching my show, submitting and trying to make 
herself a household name as a photographer, how she uses black and white is also really relevant to show within this body of work and how she selectively mixes and jumps back and forth between color photography and black and white depending on the image and also how her color photography because i've classically trained her how her color photography is almost colorless it makes you look just to the subject and and that comes from shooting in monochrome it comes from having your camera set in monochrome and deciding after the fact whether you're going to make it in color julie is an incredible photographer she's an incredible person and again this shows you how far you can go with your photography just from watching this program <laughs> there's julie right there with the self-portrait I definitely miss Julie being in Toronto. So, Julie, again, that's applied learning over time. And this is someone watching the show, doing the assignments, taking my advice, and website, Behance, like all of those things that I continually advise. Also, her post-production, getting good at retouching, like, all of these things, Julie's such a great case study because she did all of those things and you can see it in her work. So miss you, girl. I hope you're safe over there in war-torn Kiev. Next, let's look at the work of some black and white shooters that just my biggest inspiration in the world is Helmut Newton. And Helmut Newton's black and whites, this is Helmut Newton shooting Van Halen, specifically Helmut Newton shooting Eddie Van Halen. This is a cropped version of a famous Helmut Newton photograph. This is a very famous Helmut Newton photograph. Helmut Newton single-handedly brought sexuality into photography and he did it on film. He did it without Photoshop. He did it with idea and black, white, and gray. Helmut Newton by far is one of the most influential photographers of the 20th century. This is yet another Helmut Newton photograph, provocative, thought-provoking, and absolutely, absolutely mind-bending. This is another photographer who is just a master of wielding black and white. This is Platon. Platon makes black and white in a way that just makes your brain hurt. He successfully shoots black and white for magazine covers all over the world. Obviously, this is Adele. Platon. The next photographer I'm going to show you is a photographer that makes all other photogra other other street photographers. All other street photographers run in fear when they hear this name. The photographer that I am speaking to you of is the work of Alan Schaller. Alan Schaller shoots black and white exclusively. He is a Leica ambassador. He shoots Leica monochrome and Alan Schaller will make work that will make you unequivocally want to hang up your camera. Alan Schaller and his street photography is mind breaking. We are looking at the work of Alan Schaller. Mind bending. Mind bending. This 
is Richard Avedon. And much like I showed you the classic Hasselblad notches, Dick Avedon in this particular photograph is shooting 4x5 film. And how you know that he's shooting 4x5 film is that you can see where the dark slide goes in. You can see the corner registration. You can see how he labeled the frame number or his his um, darkroom assistant enabled like this is a classic one of the most important fashion photographers like of the 20th century Richard Avedon he wrangled elephants to make this photograph and had this woman in between these like one two three four powerful animals in order to get this beautifully elegant with leading line oh my word the leading line her hands like modeling right down to her fingers the way that the dress flows her legs crossed over you've heard me say how important it is for the model to cross their legs over how it narrows everything look at her body lines this with her arms her head angle the neck like also the tied down foot here and how that creates like uh, an uncomfortableness in the tied down foot here how that makes you feel for the elephants as they're trying to get away and like the elephants don't want this photograph to even happen they don't want to be there like this one's about to like roar with its trunk going up and the woman just maintains and holds that pose and this is just a pure exercise in professionalism. It's high art at its finest. More Alan Schaller. This is Platon. This is the work of Dick Avedon. Richard Avedon, beekeeper. Powerful powerful black and white alan schaller schaller this is the work of Josef karsh one of my biggest inspirations i met Josef karsh in 1990 in ottawa and karsh himself told me the story of winston churchill and him pulling the cigar from his mouth um i heard it from the horse's mouth Black and white is something that we can use as a weapon. We can actually use black and white as a weapon. The composition that we can get from a black and white capture, the lines, the shape, the patterns, the textures that we can use to create visually stunning images, the lighting that we can use to explore mood, and drama in black and white images and the way that you can set your camera for raw but also set the picture profile for monochrome so when you're looking through your camera and composing you see the world in black and white and that helps you remove distractions our eyes are dazzled by color and when you remove that dazzle, when you remove the color, you actually see the true image. And you're like, is this actually worthy of a capture? Or am I dazzled just because it's a yellow taxi? Most of the time, you're just dazzled by the color. But is the substance there? And that's how you can remove the color and just compose frame just compose line shape tone and decide later whether it's worthy of the color so you guys ready you guys ready for an amazing i am so excited about this week's assignment this week's assignment is going to be so dope so dope um I'm, uh, are you guys with me still, by the way? You paying attention? You paying attention? 
You with me? I am so excited about this assignment. And I never, never, ever do I do assignments twice. Never, ever am I or would I want to do an assignment twice. But every once in a good while i do an assignment or i come up with an assignment that yes, is yes. so good that it's worthy of doing again and we have come to the time that we are doing the masterful black and white image and guess what image i am asking you to make i am asking you to go back to the 20s, to the 30s, and mimic the world famous master photographer, Edward Weston, and go to a grocery store and buy yourself one pepper. And we are going to make the famous black and white pepper photograph, a la Edward Weston. Weston photographed fruit. Weston photographed peppers, green peppers, red peppers, yellow peppers. He photographed lettuce and made this work look like artful on a level that you can't even wrap your head around. So, I challenge you, if you choose to accept this challenge, to go to the grocery store and find a cool pepper. I like this assignment so much, I'm going to do this assignment. I'm going to submit my own pepper shots and I'm going to call my own self out on whether y'all are taking better pepper shots than me. I'm not a pepper photographer, but I am definitely asking every single one of you, whether you're a portrait photographer, a product photographer, a wedding photographer, whatever it is that you shoot, this is an exercise. This is like shooting an egg. I don't know if you've ever shot an egg before for a lighting class. Most of you likely haven't done an, I, I shot an egg for a lighting class, but I'm gonna tell you it's an exercise in insanity, okay? Shooting a pepper and understand the way that I'm judging you, I am looking for classic and timeless. I'm looking for a photograph that you're willing to print and frame and put on your wall because it is like mind bending. You can do anything. You can let the pepper rot and take photos. You can let flies attack it and there can be maggots and you can take the photo. You can cut it in half and shoot the seeds inside and take the photo. You can imitate Weston's classic photo and keep the pepper intact and light it and shoot it. But there are rules. There are rules. Rule number one, black and white. It's rule number one, black and white. Rule number two, non-distracting background. So pepper, black and white, non-distracting background. It can be any pepper. If you think that a red pepper is gonna read better, shoot a red pepper. A yellow pepper is gonna read better, shoot a yellow pepper. Maybe you're gonna shoot it on white. Maybe you're gonna shoot it on black. Maybe you're gonna shoot it on wood. Maybe you're gonna freeze the pepper. Maybe you're gonna drop the pepper into a bucket of water and put it in your freezer and freeze it and then photograph the pepper. Whatever is your idea, I want you to be absolutely obsessed about this photograph. Literally, I don't wanna see or hear about you shooting a frame. I want you to shoot hundreds of frames in order to deliver me three, three photos, because that is now how many photographs we submit from here on in, three photos. Your best three, 
out of the hundreds of ideas that you're gonna try with this pepper. This assignment, if you choose to do it, will absolutely make you two things. Number one, a better photographer. Number two, probably kind of insane. It's gonna kind of make you crazy, but it's gonna make you so good. Also, if you shoot and fail, guess what? You shoot it again. You shoot it again. If you shoot and fail to the point where you're like, that sucks. That is not the work that then you take and submit to me. Would you do that to a client? Like shoot something, know that it's like, that's not my best shit and still submit it. Come on. This is behind the picture magazine. You're trying to get the cover of behind the picture magazine. Here's a secret. You want the cover shoot vertical. Cause I can't put a horizontal on my cover. Secret secret. Shoot a double page spread. Cause I can put that across two page shoot a cover and a double page spread and another cover. I'm giving you all these secrets because there is going to be a grand champion. There is going to be the person who wins the one that I say, this is the photo of the week. The one, the person that I give all the praise to because they didn't mail it in. They put their absolute everything into this photo session. And believe me, the people who do that, you're going to be able to tell the people who don't, you'll also be able to tell. So this isn't about artificial light versus natural light. This isn't about Canon versus Sony versus Nikon versus Fuji. It doesn't matter what camera you're shooting this with. What I want is a pepper. I mean, not on a phone, preferably, because a raw file is what you're going to need for this quality. And I want you to submit all the photographs 4,000 pixels wide by 100 DPI, whatever height or that is 4,000 pixels wide. That's it. Whatever the widest size, the whatever the wide is 4,000 wide. That makes it so I can enlarge. Those are the credentials and also following these credentials, following this brief is how you do a photo assignment. How I'm giving you this assignment is the exact same way that a magazine would give you an assignment. So I need you to remember if you need to watch back this and say, okay, what exactly did Cardi say? He said three photos. He said a pepper. He said vertical. He also said black and white, but there's also all kinds of things that I can do on my own. I can shoot whatever pepper I want, whatever kind of pepper I want. Um, and I can also, um, do anything I want as long as it's black and white and non-distracting background because I'm considering it for a cover. That is your assignment. If you choose to take it, I will be looking at those assignments starting Thursday. Thursday's when we're going to really start looking at them and guess how many days that gives you? The rest of today, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Thursday at 6 I'm looking at photos. So that's your deadline. And also know that it doesn't matter what's happening in your life. It doesn't matter about all that other stuff that you're doing, your full-time job and working all this stuff. If you're trying to be a working photographer, you have to figure out a way to manage your time. You have to figure out a way to be like, okay, I'm going to wake up early today and do this other stuff so I can have time to shoot. Or I'm going to go today and go to the grocery store and get this pepper. But guess what? If you get a pepper and then don't shoot it within a certain amount of time between getting the pepper, choosing that perfect pepper and shooting it, that pepper is going to get dented. That pepper is going to start to wrinkle. That pepper is going to start to uh. so there's so many things to consider and I'm choosing this pepper because it's difficult. It's not easy, but it's not asking you to shoot a portrait, which some people have a hard time um, finding a person to shoot, but you can apply all the same theories of light to this pepper that you apply to a face, which is why I'm doing this assignment and why this assignment is so, so special. So, you guys are excited. We're looking at this stuff starting Thursday. I hope you're motivated 
to start messing more with black and white. I hope you're motivated to pick up your camera and go to the back and go to where it says picture styles and then set your camera back here where it says picture styles over er and you see right now how it says standard you set that back here and you set it to now monochrome and once you put it on monochrome now every time even you look through the camera um it's black and white so it helps you just by doing that one thing yes you're set for raw so everything can be made color in lightroom you can bring all the color information back it just helps you by removing the distraction removing the distraction so you can actually really see if what you're shooting is good great or bunk you'll know it right away as soon as you take a picture in black and white that is how you help yourself to get your work from meh to holy moly because literally <laughs> you'll notice the difference right away practice in black and white guys that's what we're doing for the next little while i'm kind of trying to take you guys some of you who aren't i mean able to be in my mentorship program i'm starting to give you guys a little bit of the benefits that i give the people who are in my mentorship program that i give one-on-one -on -one. i'm now kind of trying to also bring the rest of you along if you participate you move along with the rest of us guys i love you so much thank you for watching make sure you join the discord the discord is where everybody hangs out before and after my shows so make sure you're there discord is also how we submit images if you want to have your images reviewed during one of my live shows i do my review shows on thursday consider becoming a member here on youtube then you join my discord then you attach discord to your youtube and then the world knows that you're a member you see these secret folders and then you can submit it's all fun and dandy and smooth and it's a beautiful ecosystem and everybody is happy and the photo reviews i spend lots of time doing them they benefit i feel everybody who submits their photos and um lastly if you are watching this after the fact and you are part of the replay gang make sure you leave yo yo replay gang in the comments i want to know that you're watching this content till the end and it's bringing you value for those hardcores that are members that are watching this live I appreciate you guys and I appreciate all the love that you've been giving me today in the live chat. Make sure that you also, last time you watched me live, I asked you to leave your favorite Cardi Crew emotes in the comments. Yes sir, yes. Amazing. Today, I'm going to ask you for making it to the end of this episode. I'm gonna ask you to tell me what pepper you're gonna shoot. So leave this in the comments, not in the chat, but in the comments. I wanna hear green, red, yellow, or hot, or jalapeno, or whatever pepper. Tell me what kind of pepper that you're going to shoot in the comments. Thursday, we might make Thursday's episode looking at assignments exclusively. Meaning, if you don't have a pepper photo, I'm not looking at your photos. How's that? Guys, I hope this episode brought you value. Hope you also noticed I had to get a new microphone arm because, my God, yay, my seventh microphone arm. Seven. Seven. This, like, I should have just bought this one from the start. This is the Rode PSA1 where wherever you put the mic it stays no matter what it stays if i want to do this 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 it stays and again i don't know why i delayed and waited so long 
to get this one, but this is the Rode Mic PSA1 mic arm. Um, yes, by the way, if you are leaving all your information here about what pepper you're shooting in my live chat, I'm asking for it in the comments. Guys, I love you so, so much. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got value from today's show. Did you guys get value? Did you get value from today? Yes. Yes. Right on. I'm glad. I appreciate you guys. I'm glad that you guys are always with me. By the way, you guys yes didn't yes. glitch me very much today. You usually are continually glitching me and trying to like make me look foolish while I'm in the middle of my live show. Oh my goodness. You see what happens when I allow you guys to take control of my stream? By the way, if you wanna do stuff like this and control my stream and make me look like an absolute fool while I'm live, you too can do that as well. All you needs to do is hang out live, pay attention to, <laughs> look at these guys going crazy. Pay attention to the commands that are happening. And um, you see, this is what happens when you give control to your live audience. Yes or yes. You see what happens? They just go crazy. Okay, last thing before we end, last thing. In an upcoming episode, in an upcoming episode, I want that episode to be a group conversation. So if you're interested in being a part of a group chat where I'm going to live stream a group chat where everybody is able to be in the Discord, we can all be in there together. There's going to be one specific topic that we're talking about for the episode. Specifically, the first one, it's going to be called transitioning to pro. And the goal is that I bring my audience into my discord, into a voice chat area. You do not need to be a member for this particular episode. I'm going to make this voice chat open to everybody and you can come in there. And I want to just talk about transitioning to pro. I'm interested in what your obstacles are, what problems you're having what are you stuck with where are you stuck are you stuck are you having success do you have issues with pricing do you have issues with running your business like a business like i have questions about you and your business and where you are along your journey so how i'm gonna address that is by talking to you directly so will we actually hear you on stream i'll hear your voice and everybody who's watching will hear you as well also i will be able to show you on camera if i need to or if i want to or if you want to be on camera so that's another thing that's going to be coming up expect possibly even as early as the very next episode of behind the picture meaning next sunday i'm going to be thinking about during the week i'm going to see how many people are interested i'm trying to get like 20 or so people 25 people in a room talking about how they're feeling right now in their market in their city in their town what their niche is what they're struggling with and i'm gonna everyone's gonna get a chance to talk everyone's gonna get a chance to ask questions and it's going to be the first group conversation that i have with photographers that are all emerging pros at various levels. I'm just interested in what I can help you with the most. So that's what we're going to be doing. That's one of the things that again, if that becomes successful, that's something that will end up being part of this group mentorship program that I'm thinking about implementing. So also I'm trying this new chat business down here i haven't been really watching it but i'm looking at a little bit of it and it seems to be not ideal but the thing that's cool is like i just have the ability to like do this and then sorry do this and then do this and then do this and then come back here and then just yes, turn yes. it back to the other one in case you guys like this better. Do let me know if you like uh, 
Type some chat messages. Go, message, message. Tell me if you like this better, the way that I had it before. If you like the way that I had it before, then I'll kick myself for spending money on that other one. <laughs> I'm right here. I'm Jay. I'm right here, Javel. <laughs> yeah. So if you like this better down here, looking a little bit more clean, um, I personally, I'm thinking already. Um, yeah, I like that better. Guys, I hope you appreciate today's episode. Again, if you made it to the end, let me know what pepper you're shooting. Whether you're a member or not, I want to know what pepper you're shooting and give me the color or the type of pepper. I love you all. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you feel like being a part of this conversation. If you want to do that, then um, leave a comment in the video that you're watching right now. Also, Pop in the Discord. Say so. At me in the Discord and say, hey, Cardi, I want to be a part of this conversation. The weekly assignment details, yes, will be in the Discord. You will see the weekly assignment, our pepper assignment details in the Discord. By the way, if you became a member recently, you're gonna see your name scroll across the top here because I try to give love to my members. My members are the reason that you enjoyed a complete commercial free live stream. If you made it to the end of this video and you're watching my ending credits and you're watching this after the fact, you absolutely got subjected to commercials because I turn the ads on as soon as the live stream is over. If you want to actually avoid commercials altogether, you can get YouTube Premium. Because I'm a creator, I pay monthly for YouTube Premium, which just removes commercials across the entirety of YouTube. And the thing that's great about YouTube Premium is that the creators that you watch commercial-free we all get a little percentage. I was actually quite surprised how much money I make every month from YouTube Premium. So if you're one of those YouTube Premium members, I thank you. You can do that too to get commercial-free content or you can watch my streams live. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the Discord.